Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we have a very exciting video. We have the, if you like this, read this recommendation video. This is my second time making this, so if you want even more recommendations, I'll leave that first video down below. I made that one a few years ago. So we have 10 more, technically 20 more books. There's 20 books on this list. Um, but like 10 more pairings to talk about. So I'm going to be talking about books that I think are fairly similar to each other. So if you like at least one of the books, I feel like you'd love the other one as well. Let's get into it. I have a wide range of genres here. One of my most recent reads was for Brie and I's Chronically Courageous Book Club. We have a book club where we highlight disabled and chronically ill voices. And uh, the last pick that we picked was Mickey Chambers' Shakes It Up by Cherish Reed. Mickey in here is going through some stuff. She's not really passionate about her job. She works at this college that's local to her, but she needs some extra money to pay for her medication. She has hyperthyroidism and she needs medication in order to live. So she needs just more money to pay her very expensive medication. So she ends up getting a job at the bar that Diego owns. This is a little bit forbidden because when she gets hired, he doesn't realize that um, the woman he hired is his professor at the college. He's taking that summer course that she's running online. And yeah, so she is his employee, but then she is his teacher. So it's like doubly forbidden. She ends up falling in love with his writing and like she's reading his writing, like the writing assignments that he turns in and she like loves the way he describes certain things and just loves his writing style. And he's falling in love with her personality and how she's able to be so cheerful, especially in a place like a bar. Like she is just friendly with everyone and Diego's not and he admires her for that. I loved the setting of this book, like a great bar setting. It discusses mental health in a fantastic way, her chronic illness. I love the representation with that. Overall, amazing book. I give this one five stars. If you want to read a book similar to that one, I would definitely recommend Getting Schooled by Christina C. Jones. Reese is our heroine and she is the grad assistant to one of her mother's college courses. Both books uh, surround a college writing course, which is something that's similar between the two of them. Um, so she is the TA for that class and she ends up like falling for one of the students in the class is like writing. She's like obsessed with it. She wants to read his papers all day long. She doesn't know who he is until she bumps into him one day, like when they're all leaving class. It just happens to be Jason, who is the unconventional college student. He came to college later on in life. He's 28 and they don't really get off on the right foot. They banter and bicker a lot. And she can't believe that this broody man wrote this writing that she is absolutely in love with. They're very much opposites. They don't really get along, but they end up falling for each other, obviously. <laughs> um, so both of these books have this like banter filled relationship. You have the forbidden kind of student teacher aspect in both of them. Both women love the hero's writing style. And there's also a disability rep in both of these because Jason in Getting Schooled, he is an amputee and um, Mickey Chambers has hyperthyroidism, so there's a representation in both of these books. So if you love either of these, definitely read the other one. I have to talk about Radiance by Grace Draven, like my favorite romance book ever. It's a fantasy romance, like marriage alliance, friends to lovers, like different fantasy species falling, in, like, oh, I love this book so much. It's it's a stunning book. Um, but basically, Ildico and Brishin have to get in a marriage alliance to put an alliance between their royal kingdoms. She is like the niece to the king of the humans and then he is the spare heir to his Kai kingdom, which is like this species with yellow eyes, gray skin, sharp teeth, claws. If you wanna read like dip your toe into like monster-y romances, I feel like Radiance is a great place to start because it's like very subtle, I feel like, um, except for his like gray skin, um, very subtle with the difference differences between humans physically. Anyway, so she has to go to his kingdom with him to live with him to be his wife, to be royalty now. But when they first meet each other, they find the other person to be like repulsive, scary, ugly. And they're like, you know what? We're just gonna be friends and we're gonna let whatever happens in our marriage happen in our marriage. Like we're just gonna be very close friends. Um, but then they obviously turn into lovers. Like they end up falling for each other on the inside. And then once they fall in love, they're like, how could I ever think that this person is ugly? Like they are 
beautiful. They're stunning. I love them. Like, I love this book so much. If you love Radiance, I recommend that you pick up another monster book, but it's a little bit more intense with the monster physical aspect. Um, and this is I Married a Lizard Man by Regine Abel. Susan agrees to sign up for the Prime Mating Agency, where you basically get paired up with an alien species and sent to their planet to live with them and marry them. Alex really needs a mate. He is the ruler of his like territory kingdom on his planet and his people are kind of struggling to grow crops and to feed themselves. He thinks that getting a mate will help him with certain things I don't want to talk about, disclose to you, um, but he just, he needs a mate. So he signs up for the prime mating agency and the moment that he sees Susan, it's kind of like Radiance where like, they don't think the other person is very attractive per se, uh, but they end up becoming very close friends. It's another friends to lovers where they have to get married first. And both of these books have the heroine like, being forced into a culture they're not familiar with. So I love being able to see through the heroine's point of views in both of these books to learn about different like monster, fantasy creature, sci-fi creature cultures. Like it was very informative and really cool. These two books are very similar in a lot of ways to me, but I just specifically love like the fact that you have to get married first and they don't really find each other attractive, but then they end up falling in love with each other. And yeah, it's friends to lovers with them being married. I loved it. We're talking about some more fantasy romances. So a lot of people have read um, A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. This is the first book in her Kingmaker Chronicles. It has a new cover. Like this is the new cover if you recognize it. Um, but I love the mass market paperbacks. I just do. So um, I kept my collection the way it is. Um, but man, I love this book. If you want high stakes, fantasy romance series so surrounding the same couple, you have to read this trilogy. Kat is known as a kingmaker in this fantasy realm. It's a magical being that exists once every 200 years where they have special powers to help put men on thrones essentially, or people on thrones, but she's called a kingmaker. And many people are out to basically capture her, take, them, take her for themselves to make them a king, obviously. So she's been living in disguise for a while. She ran away from home and living in disguise. Then Griffin, who is the prince to a, um, a neighboring fantasy realm. Um, fantasy realm? Country? I don't really know how to describe it. Another country on this fantasy realm. Um, he is able to recognize Kat like very quickly when she is disguised as a soothsayer in this traveling circus. And he ends up kidnapping her in order to bring her back to his kingdom to make sure his sister stays on the throne because he took the throne for his sister and he's going to have Kat help him keep her there. They're literally like chained together at one point <laughs> and they hate each other, like hate each other. She cannot stand this guy who kidnapped her. And there's also some other quests and fantasy romance things that go into this one full of magic. The series is Bowl of magic. I love his family also. Like this is such a great fantasy romance series. If you have not picked it up yet, please do. Um, one that I read that literally made me think of this book is Phoenix Unbound by Grace Draven. We have another woman with magical powers in this one. However, in this fantasy world, magic is strictly prohibited and you will be executed if the Empire finds out that you have magic. Jolene lives in this small village in this fantasy realm and the Empire every year, I'm pretty sure, has each village in the Empire offer up a human sacrifice. Like awful, right? Like the Empire's awful. She's able to have magical powers where she can control fire, but she's also able to put a glamour over herself. So every single year she puts a new glamour on her face and volunteers as the tribute, if you will, to go get burned at the stake because she can't die from fire because she can control fire. It's very painful for her, but she will not die. So in order to save the lives of the people in her village, she sacrifices um, herself essentially every single year without the empire knowing. Azerion is a gladiator slave for the empire and he finally is the first person to notice that Jolene has been here before when all the women are lining up to be sacrificed. He's like, I recognize her. Like he's able to see past the glamour. He knows instantly that this woman has magic. Like she is magical. He sees Jolene as the perfect opportunity to escape a slave enslavement. <laughs> so he ends up kidnapping her and taking her to his kingdom. Um, before he was enslaved, he was the ruler of his own kingdom until someone took him off the throne and overtook him. 
and he needs Jolene to put him back on the throne with her magic. And so it's another case where the heroine gets kidnapped for putting on the throne reasons <laughs> and they hate each other. They bicker, they banter the entire time. And both of them have like road trip, fantasy romance road trip aspects, which I only love like road trip romances and historicals and fantasies. So like that was like one of my favorite parts of this book. My next two books are hockey romances. So um, I know Serena Bowen is a big writer when it comes to hockey romances. So um, the first one that I have to mention is Hard Hitter, which is her second book in her Brooklyn Bruiser series. Patrick in this book is like the hockey team's like, like check man, I guess. Like he is the one on the hockey team that puts the other players in their place by like checking them and stuff like that. Um, I don't know the right terminology. <laughs> anyway, um, he is dealing with a lot of chronic pain because of this. He keeps getting hits and hitting people and his body is like revolting against him. So the team recommends that he goes to the team's massage therapist. And that therapist just happens to be Ari. Ari's a little bit worried about Patrick because he does not want to be there. He has some past trauma with people touching him. Um, so there's like, I think trigger warnings in here for past domestic violence and parental abuse, I'm pretty sure. And so he doesn't like when people touch him, but Ari is able to like delve a little bit under his skin and help this man. And they end up falling for each other throughout that process. So one that I read that gave me very similar vibes is Pucked Off by Helena Hunting. I love this book. I know that some people aren't that big of a fan of the Puck series. Um, it gets kind of like crude with the jokes and stuff, which I totally understand. I have a great laugh at it, but the humor sometimes not it is not for people. This book stands out as being like the heavy, emotional, memorable one in the series for me. It's definitely my favorite book in the series and it doesn't have, I feel like, that crudeness that some of the other books have, you know what I mean? So if the Puck series isn't for you, but you want a really good hockey romance, you have to read Pucked Off. It's so good. This one is about Lance Romano and he is a very much known as the like team playboy. Lance in here, like the other hero I talked about, I believe also experienced some previous domestic violence. So that is like hidden under the surface and he tries to mask it by partying and being this happy-go-lucky guy all the time. This is his romance with Poppy, who I believe he had a previous relationship with, and he is shocked when he realizes that she is the team, like, massage and physical therapist, and she is there to help him. I love the, like, tension between these two, or, like, these four people, you know what I mean? I love the tension with these couples when it comes to, like, the massage therapy aspect, because, like, they're getting like hot and heavy for each other, but they also have to do these massage exercises and stuff like that. And whew, it, it got me, it got me, you know? So if you love either of these books, I definitely recommend the other. I know hockey books are like the rage right now. So next I have a whole series to talk about. So the Bridgerton series by um, Miss Julia Quinn is something that has gotten very popular recently in the past few years. If you didn't know, the Bridgerton series is a historical romance series surrounding the family, the Bridgertons. And it's basically about each of the Bridgerton siblings finding their husband or respective wife. Throughout a few of these books, you have Lady Whistledown, who is kind of like a newspaper gossip. No one knows who Lady Whistledown is, but she is known for writing gossip about the ton in high society. A lot of scandal happens because of what Lady Whistledown reveals to people, and she's actually responsible for even some couples getting together. But everybody wants to know who Lady Whistledown is and in this series you get to figure out who Lady Whistledown is. I don't want to spoil it and tell you what book it is in case but the certain book in here that talks about who who Lady Whistledown actually is is the book I really want to like highlight that relates to the next book I'm going to talk about but I don't want to spoil this series in case you haven't read it yet. So anyway I'm just gonna talk about the series as a whole, the Bridgerton series and specifically the Lady Whistledown aspect really remind me of Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott. This is like top three favorite books of the year for me. I am obsessed with this book. This book starts out with Lord Sin, our hero, kidnapping Lady Calliope. <laughs> so uh, Lady Calliope, her brother ended up dying I think about a year ago a few months ago and she believes that Lord Sin is responsible for her brother's death and in retaliation she ends up writing this like pamphlet kind of like Lady Whistledown so that's like one of the main reasons why I relate these books together you know um anyway she writes these pamphlets in the perspective of Lord Sin so people think that Lord Sin is writing this pamphlet talking about 
all of the debauchery, all of the horrible scandalous things that Lord Sid has done. He's known for being a scandal amongst the time. And because she's publishing all these works talking about all of the horrible things he supposedly did or did not do, because she's basically writing like him and claiming that he killed people and everything and no one wants him around anymore because they think that this pamphlet is true. No respective woman wants to marry him anymore and he needs an heir. So he ends up kidnapping Lady Calliope and is like, okay, um, you're going to my estate or like this other estate that he has in the middle of nowhere. He's gonna chain her to the bed and um, be like, you can't leave this room until you agree to be my wife because you ruined my chances with anyone else. Um, so you're gonna pay me back for making this pamphlet about me because he ended up figuring out that it was Lady Calliope. And uh, you're going to pay me back by marrying me and giving me an heir. I absolutely love this enemies to lovers romance. Like it's so good, the banter between the two, like they, they do not want to get married. They do not like each other, but Sin sees no other option. Like, so he's blackmailing her essentially to, um, to marry him. But the like writing, secret writing aspect of this book and a specific book in the Bridgerton series like gave me the same vibes and I just adore, adore Lady Ruthless. If we're talking about more historicals, um, I have to mention again The Magic by Lisa Kleypas and if you know me, you know what book I'm going to mention with this one, but um, this is about Lady Aileen and McKenna and they end up falling in love with each other, but it's forbidden. They fall in love with each other, I think it's like late teens. Um, she's like a titled woman, but McKenna is a stable boy. Her father is not for this relationship and basically threatens Aileen and tells her, if you don't call things off with him and make sure he never comes back ever again, I will ruin him or kill him. He says either one, I don't remember, but like I will make his life miserable. And to save McKenna, she ends up breaking things off with him and basically breaking his heart. And he believes that Aileen actually doesn't love him, that she's been using him this whole time. He ends up running off to America to make a name for himself, comes back years later with a lot of money. He's a very wealthy man. And he comes back in hopes of getting revenge on the woman who broke his heart. This is like a staple amongst the historical romance community. Like this is a fan, fan favorite. I have another Scott Scott to talk about. So if you love, again, the magic, I recommend Nobody's Duke by Scarlett Scott. This one is about Ara and Clayton and they end up falling for each other when they are like late teen age. They have family estates like right next door to each other. And I think one day uh, they end up bumping into each other in the woods and then they keep bumping into each other and then they purposefully meet up and fall in love, you know, the whole gist. But their families despise one another. Like there's a huge family rivalry. So they like can't really tell their parents. And so they're gonna elope, but they believe that the other person didn't meet up for the elopement. They believe the other person broke their heart. It's been years later. The heroine has since had a son, has since been married. Her husband has died. And the person who killed her husband is out to kill her now. So Clayton in here has been hired to be Ara's bodyguard essentially. And uh, they're having to confront their past feelings and what happened in the past between the two of them. They do not like each other because they believe they betrayed the other person. Like they ruined each other's lives because they didn't meet up to elope. These books are so similar in so many different ways. They give off the same vibes, the same longing. Like both of these are so good. If you need to pick up a new historical romance author, Scarlett Scott is your woman. I do have a novella one for you for all my novella lovers like myself. So Bulky by Jessica Kane is one that I would have to mention. Um, I think I recommended both of these like have them linked together for me because this is an age gap. Both of them are age gap romances where the heroine ends up falling for her best friend's dad. <laughs> so in Bulky, that's essentially what happens. She's been in love with her best friend's dad for years. And before she goes off to college, she's finally going to reveal her feelings to him. It's simply that. It's a Jessica Kane book. You know, you, you know what you're gonna get, okay? And then I linked it to, and think you should also read Big Boss by Cassie Mint, if you really liked that Jessica Kane. So our heroine in here, her roommate and her friend, um, invites her to come with her during winter vacation because she has nowhere to go. Um, and she is stuck in her best friend's house with the dad for quite a while. And her and the dad get to know each other and they end up falling 
in love. Um, it's this wonderful like winter setting. Like oh, I really enjoy this one too. So if you want little novellas, I definitely recommend these two. I have to mention some alien romances, okay? So uh, one that I recently loved is Frantor by Honey Phillips. This is book number six in her Seven Bride for Seven Alien Brothers series. That is a tongue twister of a series title. This book series takes place on an ice planet um, where there's like this big ranch and these seven brothers in arms live on the ranch. And one of these brothers, his name's Benjar, decides to go to the neighboring human village and kidnap a bunch of women and take them like back to his ranch and basically give them to all his brothers and be like, look, we all have wives now. He doesn't know that's wrong. <laughs> um, he's very clueless. And so he brings a wife for his brother Frantor, who's like the reclusive brother. He was injured in battle and he has some prosthetic limbs and scars all over his face. So he keeps to himself because he doesn't want to make anyone afraid of him. Like he would be absolutely heartbroken if anyone was scared of him. Lori is the owner of the restaurant in town and she ends up like waking up in his cabin during a snowstorm. She can't leave because it's a snowstorm. Frantor tries with all of his might to like make Flory comfortable, but he keeps the shadows. He makes sure Flory never sees him, never sees his face. So they end up falling for each other during the snowstorm, stuck in this cabin together without knowing what the other person looks like. I love romances like that. So another one with that I can't see you trope is uh, Claiming His Virgin by Grace Goodwin. In this series by Grace Goodwin, you have um, this alien species that they basically look like humans, um, but they're on a different planet and they have this faded mate element to it. Um, they know like when they see their faded mate, like that's their faded mate, okay? And this guy ends up figuring out like on this planet that uh, this very beautiful human woman who's on the planet is his fate and mate, but he doesn't want to scare her. Um, he is heavily scarred from battle and war like Frantor, and he would be absolutely heartbroken like Frantor if his mate was ever scared of him. He has been walking down the street and children have like run screaming. Like he does not want to scare people at all, especially his mate. So he keeps to himself, keeps the shadows. For his first couple times of meeting his mate, he asks her to wear a blindfold and to get to know one another based on each other's voice and what they sound like. So she's not scared of him. Like he would be absolutely heartbroken if she was scared of him. This one is a little bit on the shorter side. Both of these are. So if you want like short alien romance reads, you should totally pick these up. I talk about this book a lot, but I love it. This is His Darkest Craving by Tiffany Roberts. This is one of their monster romances where you have Cruz, this shadow entity demon, falling in love with human Sophie. She is renting a cabin on the edge of his very magical woods. And um, he's the shadow entity who's been cursed to be the shadow like for 364 days out of the year and one day a year he can be in his physical form. Anyway, he doesn't like humans. He's like looming over Sophie, is about to kill her the first night she's there and he can't do it. He ends up stalking her, falling in love with her. Like she doesn't know that the shadow entity is like falling in love with her. <laughs> um, and uh, he finally makes himself known and man, does it get hot very hot. If you want a monster romance that gave me the same vibes as that book, I have Little Green Vines by Britt Andrews. This is a sapphic romance where you have a heroine living in a cabin on the edge of this very magical wood, okay? And um, this being that lives in the woods has caught, like the heroine has caught her eye and she's going to lure her into the woods and make her hers essentially. Um, and it's very hot. Both of them are very hot. They're very good monster romance reads. The last one that I have to mention, the last pairing that I have to mention, this is a YA book, okay? This is The Hunger Games, okay? Everyone knows The Hunger Games, okay? But if you like The Hunger Games, I don't, I'm not gonna describe The Hunger Games, you know what it is. Um, I would recommend Entered in the Alien Bride Lottery by, by Margot Bond Collins. Um, this really reminds me of The Selection and The Hunger Games, but then you make it adult romance but it involves aliens, you know what I mean? So I could have held up like the selection with this book, but I didn't, uh, it's over there on my bookshelf. Um, but if you really liked like the selection and the Hunger Games, like in your dystopian YA era, like me, um, and you want to read it in kind of like alien romance form, I recommend this one. The heroine in here does not want to be chosen. I think once a year, like women get chosen for essentially like a televised version of the Hunger Games, but it's dating instead of like killing each other. And it's uh, trying to like mate humans to these aliens that they have an alliance with, that Earth has an alliance with. And the heroine does not want to get picked at all, but she ends up getting picked. Her name gets 
pulled out of the bowl essentially um and like her first day when she's getting like uh interviewed for the tv um thing backstage the hero who's one of the alien men um that's going to be trying buying for a wife he realizes that that's his faded weight and he's gonna try and convince this woman to stay <laughs> because she definitely wants to leave. It's a fun alien romance read if you want to check it out. But anyways, there you have it. This was the, if you like this, read of this <laughs> uh, recommendations for you. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, or if you have any of the books on this list, if you know of any other books that are similar to those in any way, like let me know down below because I love like a lot of these books. So. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me um like any greenery emoji like leaves a vine like any greenery um because i was thinking of little green vines <laughs> anyways uh thank you all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all